So today we're talking about top high-end brands which people love to hate. Some of them, obviously, it is deserved. Some are not deserved. Today I'm going to go through five brands that are definitely hated by a lot of people in the watch community. Uh, and some of it, like I said, is deserved, but some of it is definitely not. So getting right into it, I'm going to start with the number one brand that I have chosen, and that is, of course, Tag Heuer. A list without Tag Heuer on it when you're talking about hated brands is an incomplete list in my opinion. Uh, the tag in Tag Heuer name stands for Techniques Avant-Garde. If you didn't know that, uh, Techniques Avant-Garde was a Saudi Arabian holding company that bought Tag Heuer in 1985. And some say they destroyed not only the brand name, but the brand itself with excessive marketing and subpar products. In 1999, French luxury goods conglomerate LVMH bought Tag Heuer. Then the company also shares its fair share of controversy. Uh, there was some controversy regarding the caliber 1887, which Tag Heuer claimed was an in-house developed and made movement. However, after being caught in a lie, the CEO or then CEO of the time admitted that the source of the plans for this movement were indeed intellectual property of Seiko. And they purchased that intellectual property, so it wasn't as if they stole that movement. However, they did use Seiko plans to create their movement, and technically this was in-house to them. However, they were using a Seiko architecture. For me, this wasn't a huge issue because I think Seiko makes some amazing movements. Other Swiss companies use Seiko plans for their movements like Soprod, and I think they make some great automatics as well. Uh, Soprod are used in a lot of other watches. They're used as an ETA replacement and they're really great movements and they're actually based on Seiko movements. So they actually have the same architecture but they're made in Switzerland. So kind of interesting, I guess. In recent years, Tag Heuer have increasingly used the Heuer name alone without the tag prefix in an effort to recapture some of their old glory. And many of their products are very appealing, offering great quality and a decent value. Personally, I am a fan of Tag Heuer. I actually own a vintage Hoyer, Abercrombie & Fitch, one that was actually designed by Jack Hoyer himself. They make some amazing watches. They have an incredible history. However, throughout their history, there have been a few bumps in the road, and that's with every watch company, really. However, they've had a lot of lumps on their head, uh, and I think they do make a good product today. Uh, I really like their Hoyer-branded uh, watches, I think they do make a good watch, in my opinion. Some of the watches from the 80s and 90s are questionable, but a lot of those are actually not that bad. The man that created and rejuvenated the brands Blancpain and Omega, bringing them back from the brink of death, Jean-Claude Bebeer, applied his know-how to the next brand on my list, and that brand is Hublot. And just a quick note, he also worked at Tag Heuer. Hublot in French is the word for porthole. And this was the main inspiration for the design of their watches, borrowing heavily from the Nautilus and the Royal Oak. That was earlier on in their watch designs. It wasn't until Jean-Claude Bibir took over as CEO in 2004 that a lot of hate ramped up for the brand. And the introduction of the Hublot Big Bang chronograph is really one of the biggest reasons, which some say not only borrowed from AP and Patek Philippe, but downright copied it. Those close resemblances and the brand heavily relying on base movements like the Valju 7750, while at the same time charging prices in the tens of thousands of dollars, has fueled the raging fire of hate from collectors to this day. It doesn't hurt that many of their designs are somewhat very wild. I actually featured Hublot on a list of some of the ugliest watches ever made that I did on this channel. And they do make some crazy designs, some really crazy colors on their watches. They are brash, they're not for the faint of heart. So a lot of collectors do shy away from these and with good reason. Now, I don't think they're terrible watches. They're probably pretty well made. However, they do get a very bad rep among collectors and that's just the way it is. Next on my list, next two watches on my list, are currently watches that sell for a premium and a big premium. So clearly the hate is not as intense as the first two brands that I have mentioned. Richard Mille creates some of the world's most complicated and expensive watches, also some of the most desirable. Many of their watches feature bespoke components made from high grade 
technical materials, and many of their watches sell for double the asking price. Design like race cars with ergonomic forms, lightweight materials, and in very low numbers. So what's not to like, right? Well, many people think they make some of the ugliest oversized watches money could buy. It's the old argument just because it can be done doesn't mean it should be. And the all too often comparison to a G-Shock. Is more always more? Well, that's really up to you. The fact that an expensive watch like that gets compared to a G-Shock is kind of funny. Uh, they do a lot of bespoke work on these watches. A lot of them are custom made. Some of them are actually custom made for their clients. They make some really beautiful watches. Their, their actual designs, if you look at them, are beautiful. However, they are large, really in your face. They're bright colors, and a lot of people just are turned off by that. And I really do understand it. And it kind of reminds me of another brand on this list. It's actually the last brand. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The next on this list is obviously not a hated brand, but at the same time, it is one of the most hated brands. That is Rolex, arguably the most popular watch brand of all time. However, when you are at the top, you are always the biggest target for criticism. Rolex is one of the most recognizable brands in the world, not only in the watch world, but in the world of all products. They are one of the most recognizable names and one of the most recognizable brands. And what people hate most about Rolex are the fact that they can't get one. Wait list, Instagrammers, empty stores, ADs only selling to friends, backdooring watches to flippers. Many people are getting tired of what they believe are tactics created by the brand to inflate demand. Whichever way you see it, Rolex are masters at marketing, and it's clear more people love the brand than hate it, and that is for sure. One other brand I will mention here is Tudor, who actually get residual hate that is sort of shared with Rolex. Many people don't like Tudor because they feel they have been pushed on people in lieu of Rolex not being available to purchase. Rolex and Tudor are under the same umbrella, which is the Hans Wildorf Foundation, giving Tudor the nickname of Rolex's little brother. Now the case here is, is that Rolex are hated because you can't get them, and a lot of people do not like the tactics that are going on. There's a lot of shady business that things are sort of getting tied back to Rolex, and people do not like that. Whether or not Rolex is doing anything, and I don't believe they actually are, people believe that they are. And one thing that they are doing for sure is pushing you towards Tudor because Tudor make a more affordable product. They're more readily available. So they want you to buy a Tudor if you can't afford and you cannot get your hands on a Rolex because the demand is there and they want to push some of that demand to Tudor. So a lot of people don't like that either. And that's why they call Tudor Rolex's little brother. Kind of makes sense. Last and probably the easiest to hate at least from my perspective, is Jacob & Co. Jacob & Co started life selling 50 millimeter dinner plates, which housed five quartz movements for your wrist. They sold for tens of thousands of dollars with diamonds and jewels anywhere they could fit them on the dial, the case, and in some cases, even bracelets. Today, Jacob & Co make what many believe to be tacky watches, large gimmicky watches, and many look like fish bowls for the wrist. If you couldn't tell by my change in tone, this is the one brand from this list I actually hate, not only because of the watches, which I think work way better as table clocks, however, because of personal interaction that I've had with Jacob Arabo, who is the actual owner of Jacob & Co. You may not know this about me, but I was a chef for many years. I worked as a chef in a restaurant in New York City called Nobu, which is very close to 47th Street where Jacob actually works and they are headquartered on 47th Street. And Jacob was a regular at Nobu 57, which was the restaurant that I worked at. And he was nasty to a lot of the people that I worked with specifically because I was a chef I was inside the kitchen. He was very nasty to a lot of the waiters and waitresses. And on one occasion, he actually grabbed a waitress by the arm. And it actually caused a lot of problems for her and not for him. And it was kind of a bad situation. I really didn't like him because of that. He was really, really rude to a lot of people who were working there and with no good reason whatsoever. Service was excellent there. People were really friendly. Uh, and he was not. He was rich, obviously. He was making a lot of money at the time. His watches were very popular at the time as well. 
um, and they still are popular today. I think they make nice watches. They're nice to look at, but not for your wrist. In my opinion, as I said, I think they work better as a table clock uh, or a wall clock, but uh, I don't think that the person behind the brand is really nice. And that's one of the major reasons why I really do not like Jacob & Co. I don't like their watches, but I don't think they're that bad. But tell me what you guys think in the comments below. So these are five that I have chosen. I know there are a ton of other brands out there that people hate, Invicta is one. But what I wanted to do here was make a list of high-end brands that people really do not like. And there are more high-end brands out there that people don't like, like Romain Jerome, and there's a few others. Um, I think that every watch brand has something about it that's appealing in some way. Some have less than others, but these all have appealing watches in their lineups. Obviously, Rolex have a lot of appealing watches in their lineup, and I would definitely love to own one. Uh, but Richard Mille, same thing. I would love to own a Richard Mille, but they sell over their list price, so they do get a lot of hate because of that. Um, the other watches, as I mentioned, Tag Heuer. Uh, I really love Tag Heuer. I think they make some great watches, but they do get a lot of hate just in general. Uh, Hublot, on the fence, depends on the watch, uh, but they don't make horrible, horrible watches that I would never wear one. Especially if someone wanted to give me one, I would definitely wear it. Uh, anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below, as I mentioned. Uh, I really wanna hear from you guys. I know there's plenty out there. Uh, there's plenty of other watches and, and I'd like to hear uh, what you guys have to say in the comments below. Maybe I can make a part two of this. I definitely wanna make another video where I talk about watches that are more affordable and also hated. I think that uh, definitely is worth making as well. Anyway, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Watch Chris Blog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in 